NDMeTV.com, the Everybody Network. From Palm Springs, California, it's Curiosity with your host, Renee Poingard. Here's Renee. Hi, I'm Renee Pinard. I'm the host of Curiosity. I am so excited about our next guest, Colette. She's an actress, a singer, and also an independent employee. So we're going to find out all about her. So let's start off, first of all, married? Divorce. Divorce. How long have you been divorced? Um, three years. Three years. So it's fairly yes. new. Fairly new. How you doing? I'm great. What have you discovered about yourself since you've been free? Hmm. I've discovered that I can do a lot of things that I thought I was too old to do or that had kind of passed me by. Uh -huh. You know, when you're married and you're kind of on one path and there's some hopes and dreams that you might have, and you're like, oh, well, those was fine when I was a kid or before I got married. And now I'm like, oh, wait, the world is my oyster. I can, like, really reach back and grab some stuff. So I'm finding out that I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was. Good. That I can just basically do whatever I want and that I have a lot of opportunities still available to me. So how long were you married? 20 years. Whoa, 20 years. Yes. So up until a certain time in your life, maybe a little bit over 25, maybe under 30, mm -hmm. you had a bug for acting? I did. I uh -huh. acted a lot in high school, even uh -huh. in college. I was in like performing groups and stuff. I, I'm a singer too, so I kind of put the acting aside and was focused on singing and church and ministry, which I still do all of those things. But you know, you just kind of think, oh, that's childhood stuff. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm just I'm mature now. I'm a mom, raising my kids. You know, being the wife, the mother, the sister Owens in the church, and just kind of mm -hmm. focused on that stuff. Didn't really think about wow. acting and singing outside of that arena. Okay, so I got to go back. I'm going to let you know. I'm really nosy now, Colette. Okay, uh -oh. so <laughs> now you're married. How old are your children? My children are 33, 30, and 22. Well, let me correct you. You don't have babies. No. You have young adults. I have All right. Grown wow, you look good. Thank you. You look very good. Thank you. So let me ask you, you're being mother. You're mm -hmm. being Sister Owens. Mm -hmm. And in the back of your mind, you're thinking... I want to be an actress? No. What were you thinking? I was very content to do what I was doing. I think being a mom is amazing. I've always wanted a lot of kids and a family. So for me, the acting was just, you know, it was something I did when I was young. And that's past me. And I moved on from it. I really wasn't, like, thinking about I wanted to do more in the acting arena. But I was thinking there's more for me to do uh -huh. than just going to church, singing in the choir. I was singing in a group. And I mean, that was really wonderful and great, but I always felt like I needed to do more. But when I thought more, I thought more as a couple. Like, we should be out ministering more. We should be reaching more. We should be doing all this other stuff. But it wasn't necessarily just that I wanted to be an actress. Mm -hmm. I just felt like there was more to life than what I was doing. I'm going to get back to that. But right mm -hmm. now, I'm going to get back to that because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still being nosy. So <laughs> let me ask you a question. Your children yes. and you, what type of relationship do you have? Absolutely close. What's absolutely close? Um, my kids talk to me a lot. We talk almost every other day. Mm -hmm. uh, my son and I talk probably every day. Oh, great. My daughters... Maybe, like I said, every other day. I think that we're close, at least from my perspective, mm -hmm. we're super close. Um, I always well, one way people, to tell, how were they with that divorce? They were devastated. Were they pro, mom do it, mom don't do it? Well, um, my divorce was my husband's idea. Mm. So they were very supportive in terms of, oh, my God, we can't believe this, this is happening. happening to mom. And how are you? And what are you going to do? And, you know, my, the girls were gone, so it was just my son and I in the house. Mm -hmm. So that was a little different because we had gone from, like, having tons of people around, tons of kids mm -hmm. and all that, to just two people um, with our son. And then it was just the two of us. So it was like, whoa, life is just change like that. Wow. But um, they were super supportive, okay, very great. much so. You know, even me moving to California, they're like, Mom, do it, do whatever you got to do. That's great. Yeah, so they're, they're amazing. That's good. So you're self-employed. 
Yes. And what do you do as your occupation? So my occupation, I work for a company, Melaleuca. I do health and wellness products. Oh, yes. so health and wellness products far as vitamin supplements, facials, we everything? We everything from A to Z because the whole goal is to help you to translate um, your house hold from all the toxic chemicals so you know cleaning products what we put on our body the food and supplements all of that so do you like have a station that you do or do you go to people's homes are um, you on the on online ordering what do you online do online ordering mm -hmm. mostly so i get customers and they just set up their own online store and they shop okay give me a pitch tell me something that you think i need to make my house more well give me a pitch I would ask you, what do you clean with? Mm -hmm. Do you use national products? I use Clorox. Okay, so I want you to know that Clorox and bleach and all those things are chemicals that were created in World War II as war warfare. Mm -hmm. They are not chemicals that are supposed to put on your body. And let me show you what actually happens when you use Clorox and you inhale those fumes because there's a study out that shows that people that in just clean women that clean their home just once a week are more likely to get cancer and as if they had been smoking five or six packs of cigarettes wow. a day. Wow, I can see that you know your trade very mm -hmm. well. Very proud of you, Colette. Thank you. Hanging in there, doing what you want to do, self-employed, wonderful relationship with your children. Mm -hmm. What could be better than that? So Not we're going to find out though what your friend said about you. <laughs> <laughs> Why you're curious to know what they feel about you is one thing, but we're going to be back. Ooh, we're yes. going to go take a commercial. We're coming back. We're going to talk to Colette, and I think you're going to be surprised about what Colette friends have to say about her. Please come back. <laughs> Welcome back to Curiosity. I have a beautiful spirit here. Her name is Colette. She is a divorced woman. She's a mother of three grown adult children who are very supportive. And you have grandchildren yes. who I know you love today. Absolutely. Okay. And she's self-employed. And on top of that, she's an actress and a singer. Used mm -hmm. to be in a formal group. Yes. Now... She's curious as to what her friends think about her. So let's start off with all the good stuff. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Okay. I love that smile. Mm. Keep it going. They say you're a visionary. Is that true? Absolutely. So visionary in what way? What do you see for yourself happening and coming? Well, they think I'm a visionary, and I am because mm -hmm. I have big dreams and big goals. I see myself having a talk show. I mm. see myself speaking to lots of women with um, a women's ministry that I do. I'm writing a book, several at, at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I do have some big visions for myself. And they also say that you're very positive. Yeah. And they say that you are a good mother, mm -hmm. which I can feel right now that that energy that you are from what you have told me. And they also said that you are a good writer. So you're yeah. writing a book. What are your books about? So I have a book called Message to My Children, mm -hmm. 20 Things That I Want to Tell You Before I Die. Mm. And Why Message to My Children? Well, you know, I feel like when you're raising your kids, mm -hmm. you're putting out fires all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. You know it's, mm -hmm. no, when they're little, no, 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 don't do this, don't do that. But it's like immediate stuff to keep them out of danger. You're mm -hmm. just trying to raise them up. And life lessons you don't really get to so much. I mean, there's things you teach them, but then, you know, like in hindsight, 2020, you're kind of like, man, I should have told them this. I should have told them that. Man, mm -hmm. I want them to know this. So I'm, I'm a writer mm -hmm. and I journal all the time. So I said, why don't I just figure out what's 20 things I really want to make sure that I leave? Because I'm all about leaving legacies. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like we need to document stuff. So that's kind of where that came from. And the second book? It's called My Red Sea Experience. Mm -hmm. And based on the podcast that I'm working on and all that, talking about some okay. trials and tribulations. So and you are busy, busy, yes. busy, busy. Yes. Good heart. They say you have a very good heart. Okay. I believe that to be true. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't know you, I feel it. <laughs> right. They say that you're positive. Mm -hmm. You're a visionary. You're a good writer. Mm -hmm. And they say you're a good mother. Mm -hmm. And they say that you are a person that they can confide in. 
Do you find that to be true? So yes. you hold their truth what? Personally, secret, lock the door, throw away the key, won't tell? Um, yeah, I guess mm -hmm. that's, people do confide in me about a lot of stuff. Does that come from the fact that they say that you're also a strong woman of God? Probably. Uh -huh. I think that's part of my ministry and just who I am. Uh -huh. To be a good listener. Just to be a good listener and people, even when I don't want it, they just open up. <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I got to tell you something, Colette. I'm the one who needs tissue right now. So oh, no. <laughs> that's because I got something I need to tell you what they're telling you. And I feel uh, compassion and I don't want to tell you because you are a beautiful spirit. But you were curious. That's right. And you want to know. Yes. And you can accept the truth. Yes. Okay. They say, number one, you spread yourself too thin. Spreading yourself too thin means when you take just a little bit of butter, not as much as you need, and try to spread it over a piece of bread, and you cannot make the whole thing get covered. In other words, there are spots that are lacking. Yeah. Is that possible? Absolutely. In what area? Hmm. A lot. Okay. Now, the other thing they said, that you need to have more self-care. So that means that when people are looking at you, yep. they see what you lack. Right. In yourself. I can see that. So I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think about you and your lack of self-care oh you need tissue yeah <laughs> i might need some tissue girl i got tissue bring it but, on but so lack of self-care for me mm -hmm. probably just that i don't put myself first hmm. all the time mm -hmm. i um oh really so i i, yeah, I don't mean but, for you to cry but, but i got to ask you another question that's i gotta ask you another question because I told you I was going to go back to this. Ooh, please love me when you, even when you walk mm, out the door. Okay. Okay, because I, I told you I was nosy. Yeah. So now you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. You're spreading yourself in. There's a lack of self-care that your friends are seeing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And they're also saying that you need to focus on one thing because the fact. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you need to focus on one thing because apparently you're not taking care of all the things that you need to take care of. Uh -huh. I already knew that was coming. Uh -huh. That was the one I was waiting oh, for. Oh, so you know it. Oh, yeah. Oh, ooh, ouch. Okay. Mm. Ooh, too thin. Mm. Possibly could have affected your marriage. You don't know, but you think about mm. it when we come back from this commercial. We're going to be back and we're going to find out about Miss Colette and what she thinks is happening and going on mm. with her reveal. Don't go away. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to Curiosity. I'm here with my guest, Colette. She's a mom, she's a singer, she's an actress, and she is overworked and spreading herself too thin. <laughs> and it is disturbing me greatly because she's a woman of God, she's loved, people confide in her. It's not easy to find someone that you could trust with what you're feeling on the inside. Mm -hmm. You're a visionary. So I need to ask you, Colette, how do you feel about what people are saying to you? that you spread yourself too thin and you're not focused at anything? Um, I say there's truth to that. I think that when you, it's kind of like a two-edged sword. I always, sometimes I ask God, like, why did you give me different talents? It would be so easy if I just had one thing. Some people say to me, just do one thing. And I say, well, what do you do? Well, I only have one thing, but I've got more than one thing. So I feel like this urgency to just do everything. So for me, I want to be a good steward of my gifts. I want to be the one who, when God comes back and he says, what did you do with these talents? I say, I did this, I did this, I did that. But I recognize that I am one person. So in 2020, <laughs> I have committed to not trying to do everything all at once because you can't be a what is a jack of all trades master of none i get that so i you know this is a conversation i've had with myself and my friends and family we've talked about the fact that i do a lot so i'm just working on really focusing more on one or two things so i've got narrowed down i'm going to work on this book 
And when am I going to do that? You know, I literally had to put myself on a schedule because you, you can. You can just, you know, visionaries, that's a curse we have. We see this big picture and we're, we're going to do this and then we don't do the details. Okay. So I, I fully, I accept that and now, I had to work on it. <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm no psychiatrist, but usually when a person spread themselves thin and they're all over the place mm -hmm. and they second guess, maybe I might have had an effect on my husband with this, it's something deeper in that core. So what is going on that makes you antsy to jump from one thing to another thing to another thing and maybe not complete your thing and for people to say you need more self-care? What is it? What happened? What's going on? Tell mm. me. Tell me what it is. Hmm. Are you happy with you? I am absolutely happy with me. What are you happy with you about? I'm happy that I keep going. Keep going mean, but you keep going, but you're spreading yourself thin. I am happy that I recognize that one thing doesn't affect you permanently. Ah. That, that you can have a plan, you can have a path, and you oh. can detour. I'm happy that I recognize that. I'll tell you, people have always said to me, you know, this happened to me, and I just got on the floor. I just couldn't do this, or I couldn't do that. So I have to say, I do, I am doing a lot. Mm -hmm. But it's not an accurate statement to say I don't finish hmm. things. Mm -hmm. That's not accurate. I do a lot. I spread myself way too thin. I say yes to things that, you should that say I no should to. say no to. And they said and that. Your I do. Said oh, that. It's, it's a bad thing that I have, but that's not, we're not, that's different than me, than my projects. Colette. So usually when people do one thing after another is because they don't want to be still because to be still means that you got to listen to something. So mm -hmm. what are you fighting? What are you running from? What do you not want to hear in your life? Something is going on. Is it the fact that the marriage you feel rejected? Do you feel like it was unfair? I know you got three years. Are you dealing with that? What's oh. stopping you from sitting down, taking a deep breath? Is there a fear to stop? If I stop, I have to think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. No, I don't have a fear about stopping. Mm -hmm. I stop and I pray and I meditate and I think a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, we we'll go back to, what did you ask me about the marriage? marriage? Do you feel that maybe something was unfair, unresolved, oh. or do you feel like, uh, I don't want to use the word hurt, but uh, that they were totally wrong in the reason why they left you? And how did you, I, how did you internalize that? Okay, well, let me answer it this way. Mm -hmm. When my marriage broke up mm -hmm. and my husband left, it was kind of out of the blue. Mm -hmm. So, you know when you break up with someone and all your friends and family go, oh, girl, you're going to get snatched up real soon. Somebody going to come along. Uh -huh. I was like, mm, I don't want to get snatched up. I need to learn from this. So mm -hmm. I'm not a person that just runs and jumps into stuff. I haven't dated really since my, and he left two years before we were divorced. Mm -hmm. So it's been five years that we've been separated or gone, whatever, however you want to say that. But the divorce was final in 2016. So I didn't go, do I feel like he was wrong? I think he was wrong in the way he left. Absolutely, hands, no question about it. Mm -hmm. People would always say to me, why aren't you angry? You're going to be mad. You're going to blow up. Like, well, when, when the graduation happens and he comes, you're just going to see him and get mad. No, because in all honesty, I just feel like, People have the right to do whatever they want to do. If you hurt me, I'm, I'm hurt. He hurt me. That was devastating. My whole entire life changed like that from where I thought it was going to go. But it took me probably like a year, a good solid year to just go, okay, God, what am I supposed to do now? My son teases me because after about a year, I kind of like was more myself. But I always do things to make myself over it. Like, prayer, meditation for a solid year. I wasn't trying to date. I was asking God, what is the lesson? What am I, where do I go? What are you trying to teach me now? Mm -hmm. And it, like I said, it took me about a year before I was okay to even try to move on. Let me ask you a question. Let me put you in this place. I'm now mm -hmm. in my dining room. Mm -hmm. My husband has left me. The place is dark. The lights mm -hmm. are low. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, what about me? What am I thinking about me? The rejection that I felt, where I've been, where I need to go. What are you thinking about you and how can you make yourself not spread yourself as thin? We'll be right back. 
to get that answer because we're going to commercial. Okay. I want to hear it. I know you do. So please come back. Let's hear what Colette is going to tell us. Welcome back. We have revealed to our guest, Colette, that she's a visionary. We have revealed that she is a person who is a good mother, a good heart, a person you can confide in, which is beautiful. But we also learned that you spread yourself too thin, that you don't accomplish things that you really set out, that you don't know how to say no to people, which affect you. And also, there's a lack of self-care. People are concerned that you're not taking care of you. So when you were in that dining room, before we went on break, and you're there with the lights out and things are dark, what are you thinking about you? Not your husband, but about you. I guess I was thinking, what is it about me hmm. that would make somebody walk away from 20 years of marriage? Hmm. Okay, now we're in the dining room today. You're in the dark. We know that you pray. We know you meditate. Mm -hmm. But what is happening in that dining room right now? So in my dining room now, mm -hmm. I am thinking that I'm grateful. Hmm. I'm thinking that I'm blessed. Hmm. And I'm thinking that I'm a warrior. Okay, Miss Warrior, so I got a That's question for thinking. you. Do you believe what your friend said to you is true, or do you deny it? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yeah, I think it's true. Okay, Once so I'm what you going to do about it? Um, I'm working hard to take better care of myself, to take time out for myself, to actually do for me and not just spend so much time ripping and running, doing for others and accomplishing things that don't lead me to where I'm trying to go. Mama, I need you to watch my kids for me so me and my husband can go the way. Are you still busy writing your book? You're gonna say what? Um, yes, I am still busy writing my book. Uh-huh. Mom, right now, what are you doing? Do I hear water? Where are you with water? What's going on? I need you to come by and help me clean my house. You're gonna say what? I'm gonna say no, but typically, Really, see, I took that away. I'm smart because I know I have a problem, so I moved to California. So my kids are in Indiana. Okay. So you already I, started. I'm, I've started. I separated. I've, I'm focused on me. Uh -huh. Now, I will admit that they do call me and ask me a bunch of stuff, and I still have sometimes try to answer things and fix things from a distance, but. I'm, I'm getting better about Okay, that. now my last question, because I told you I was nosy. Uh, you looking for anybody? Uh, Have you got there yet? I'm open definitely right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, but I just, I haven't met anybody. Hmm. But honestly, I want, there's some things I just want to accomplish. So do you think own, that right now you got self-care? Your self-care, you're saying no, you're focusing yeah. on you, focusing on you that mm -hmm. somebody might notice, Colette? They very well could notice Colette. Okay, Colette. And I'm open to somebody noticing Colette. <laughs> okay, so we know, number one, that not only you're a visionary, you're mm -hmm. an actress, you're a singer, people can confide in you, even though you're going to do less, no, can't do that, yes. that you're going to work on your book. Yes. Okay, only one at a time. I'm only working okay, on, on one, one at, at a time. time. Right okay, yes, yes, right now. Yes. You're going to continue to work with your spa, wellness, make yes. everybody else feel better. Yes. You're going to dedicate some time to that. Yes. Is what you're telling me. Mm -hmm. All right. And what does the new Colette look like? The new Colette is independent, taking care of herself and handling her business on her own. That sounds like a, a plan to me, that, Colette. That's, that's who I am now. What did you learn from this lesson? Are you glad um, that you were curious? I'm glad that I was curious. It is actually exactly what I thought. My friends are really open and honest with me, so they pretty much say that a lot. So you recognize the less care for yourself? Mm -hmm. Not so much the care for myself, but the all over the place, because, you know, part of who I am, you know, I'm an Aquarius, and we're all over the place. We're, we're creative. So most of my friends are not. 
Mm. Most of my friends are not in the industry of entertainment. They are very blank, 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 blank. My family is very a lot of. So they them. don't understand you so and your diversity and everything exactly. that you want to do. So I they go, can't get with that. When I look, I was a real estate broker and for twenty years, very successful. Mm -hmm. And my parents would always go, "Girl, when you, so you gonna get a job?" I'd be like, "But I got agents that work for me. I, I, I you know." So I've always gone against the grain. Okay. And that's just part of who I am, but they are still correct in a lot of, you know, we can always do better. And I know I can do better, especially when it comes to taking care of me. So being curious has worked out for you. It has worked out. It has sealed the deal yes. of what you already knew, yes. what you already heard. Yes. Collect, I am so glad that you accepted what your friends have to say. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do about the change? What is your commitment? Um, I am put myself on a schedule to help me stay focused so that I can get things done as they come along and not just be all over the place. My biggest problem is organization, mm -hmm. and I know I need to do that. So I'm planning and I'm focused on doing just that, being more organized and taking better care of myself. Mm, that's what I wanted yeah, you to hear. Yeah, definitely time out for me, uh -huh. doing some things that's just relaxation. You ready for that? Absolutely. It's mm -hmm. overdue. I think it is overdue, too. Yes. So I'm glad to hear that, and I'm glad that you're going to make that positive change. Absolutely. Anything else you want to let me know or what you um, feel? No, you know, I'm just happy that my friends love me and are honest about what they think. Sometimes think you need that thing. window of somebody else's eyes, so I'm okay with that. That's a good thing. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. For Thank you for joining us. Make sure you come back next week with curiosity to find out what your friends think about you. It probably would be a good thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, glad that way. Oh, give me a hug. Girl. Aww. <laughs> it's gonna be all right. NDMeTV.com, the Everybody Network.